everybody welcome back to my channel relapse tackle I had a few requests to for the new hatchet head mold I'm tripping over stuff in this room um, this one I modified for the underspin I also modified one spot for the EWG so I'm gonna do a few more modifications to it, but there's the mold. The other side, no magnets. Just put the magnets on the left side. I like to drop mine in the left. Right-handed, so it works out better for me for some reason. So, I'm gonna get some fresh ingots in my lee pot and get her warmed up. So, drop some of those in there. So I always put the ingots in when the lee pot is cold. So here. Get some lee pot. Pull this stuff out of the way. Lee pot's cold. Get some ingots. Just set a couple of them in there. Try to keep it above half full. Be positive. Just set them in there like that. I'll plug this guy in, turn her up to about six, and then I'll turn it back down to five once I get going. So let me do that real quick. I'm gonna shut my stove off. Not plug it. Just out of the way. I always un unplug everything, just a little safer. I'm gonna turn my fan on. And I always put something under here to catch any drips. So. I'm gonna have to change camera angle a little bit and let that heat up. So, stay tuned. Alright, I'm going to get the mold warmed up, set it up here on top of the lead pot, sometimes even leaving them open like that so that the heat can flow up between the two plates. Helps don't place the handles on top of the edge there, they will burn or melt plastic ones probably melt right off. I haven't had any issues because I know better than to put them there. Um, so the hooks that I'm using, I got owner size one, 90 degree jig hook. It's a 5313, got a few of those. Uh, number four must add 427 824 so those will be for the 16th ounce these will be for the eighth ounce um, I use a size zero sinker eye a stainless sinker eye um, and then the WB 400s um, I didn't open up the hole quite a bit or didn't open up the hole enough to do the um, the uh, underspin wire forms there's the understand wire form. Um, I could go back and just mill it out a little bit more and open it up a little more, but I prefer to use the closed um, sinker eyes. I don't like the fact that the other ones can open up or snag on weeds and stuff. So I'll try to get this angle correctly. So the open spot on the one side. And then what I have to do, because of the mold, just threw one on the floor. Um, the mold wasn't designed for these. Is take my smooth jaw jeweler pliers, needle nose pliers, and I have to bend them just a little bit. So just give it a little bit of a kick, and then they they fit in there better. So, you know, I'll 
pour up a couple of them and show you guys. I'm not going to pour up a bunch just because it's repetitive. Let's see, Let's see what I'm doing. Get the mold nice and hot. Let's get the mold. So I added the magnets and then I milled out a couple spots for the underspins and then also a spot for that EWV hook. I use a Michael Burry's uh, size one hook in that. So like I said, for the eighth ounce, I'm gonna use this uh, one owner, and then 16th ounce, I'm gonna use a number four must add. These things can be a pain to put in any mold. Just kind of a pain to line up. And I'm going to grab this guy. So my wire bait keeper. Move this stuff where I need it. Said these little components are such a hassle to get in place. If you use a non metallic little plastic needle nose, that works pretty well from what I've heard. I have not used one. I probably should probably should buy one and try. Especially considering I had all these magnets and everything and it makes it a lot harder to get it to its destination, but as soon as it's dropped in place then it then it's good. Just getting it getting it to the right spot. So, hopefully the mold hasn't cooled down too much, but there it is with the bent sinker eyes. I got them placed below the hook because the other part, the wire bait keeper sticks up. So I want those going opposite directions or they interfere with each other. It's kind of a tight space. Make sure the mold closes all the way. They include a small bolt you can put put in there and cinch that down if you want that way if you want to let your hooks preheat and all your uh, components now you don't have to worry about this opening up you just set it back on your leaf pod or whatever your heat source is and let them warm up a little bit more um, but so I'm gonna I'm gonna pour these other ones that are not in there first to help heat the mold up. Help heat the mold up a little bit more. Um, and I just feels good. I didn't put my glove on. I try to all the time. I'm get, still trying to get used to it. So try to wear a leather glove on the hand that you're putting under the lead pot to the back splashes get your hands and try to wear a longer one so that it covers more of your arm and you get really long ones but I find them to be kind of a hassle too. We all goof sometimes and I try to do stuff as safe as I can but some things get overlooked from time to time. They included a wrench in this too, so a little Allen, Allen key, but uh, I'm not sure where I put it. <laughs> so they, they sent two bolts and an Allen key with the mold. So. Alright, I got a little flashing and that's probably um, because the, the spot isn't open enough 
for my sinker eyes. I got to go back in there and clean them up a little bit. This mold, I haven't had any issues with it flashing when I'm just pouring regular, um, regular old jigs without the underspin. So, they all stuck to the other side. You can see, I poured the other ones just to help heat the mold up a little bit, but I poured them kind of fast, and this thing is kind of dribbling a little bit. It's not pouring the greatest. So I got to probably clean my lead pot out and uh, lubricate everything. Maybe go back and uh, use some um, anti seeds on the spout and stuff to help it pour better. Like I say, uh, never throw these back into the leaf pot. I'll throw these down here because you chuck them in there, they splash lead all over the place. It can be dangerous. So, what I'll do is I'll take my flush cutter and just clip that straight across because we, we want that hatchet head to be sharp and then uh, just cut my little flashing off on the bottom here I don't know if I should paint a few of these up or what what you guys want to see um, so we'll just do some that are pouring and we'll go from there um, shoot, I never figured out what size. I think my uh, willow blades that I was using, I know a lot of you were asking. I forgot to look it up. I'm, I believe they're a um, zero, zero, or maybe a zero. I know the uh, ball bearing swivels that I use are a zero. I believe the blades are zero or zero, zero. I'll, I'll measure them up and, and uh, put it in the description. But there you have it with the owner hook. And the mustang. actually already bent. So I'll place that in the mold. Like I said, I just bend these just a little bit so that they don't interfere with the hook or the wire bait keeper. You can pour this mold without the bait keeper if you want. So you want to do, you want to fly or do uh, some crappie jigs. You can do that, that as well without the bait keeper. flashing on there again. I gotta I gotta do some rework to this thing. Yeah I'm 
doing that again. Doing it again. <laughs> Naughty boy. Sometimes you want to let them cool just a little bit so they're a little more uh, solid at the sprue. So put that sprue off again. Take your flush cutter, get all that excess you don't want to run there off. Like I say, I, I just scrape along them a little bit. Try not to make any lead dust. This stuff is pretty wicked. Two that I just poured again. I kind of scratched up the jig on the one side a little bit with my flush cutter, but the paint would cover that. So I have it. I'm gonna cut the video there. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, uh, share with your friends, comment if you have any questions or concerns. So, see you around.